The realms of fantasy contain limitless creativity, sprawling landscapes, terrifying creatures, unique cultures, strange magic, and intricate mysteries. The truly great works challenge readers with thought-provoking themes, intricate plotlines, and multi-layered characters. And these leave a lasting impact on our minds and hearts long after we turn the final page. Now for those who have already delved into the realm of fantasy and explored all the beginner recommendations and now desire to venture even deeper, prepare yourself and maybe your wallets because I have a ton of recommendations for you. Now previously I made a beginner's guide to fantasy, you can go watch that video if you missed it, but I decided to follow that up. This is my ultimate guide to advanced fantasy. These are recommendations for the experts, the veterans of the genre. What do I mean by that? I mean those that feel like they're well versed in fantasy, or you feel at least pretty familiar with fantasy by this point that you want to explore the genre more. Now what qualifies a book to be advanced or expert level fantasy? I did have some reasoning to my choices. Now this is not meant to be gatekeeping in any way, this was just a fun list to make of books that I think are a bit more advanced. Some of these might have denser prose and more complex themes, uh, other ones just might be more different and experimental. I'm also going to include some of those epic series that span several several massive tomes, as well as just some fantasy that doesn't get talked about that much that I think deserves your time. If there's any that I didn't include in my video that you think should have made the cut, let me know in the comments. But real quick, before we get started, this video is sponsored by Blinkist. Just imagine having access to thousands of top quality books at your fingertips, all distilled into bite-sized 15-minute reads or listens. Whether you're a busy professional or a lifetime learner that's hungry for knowledge, Blinkist is your go-to platform for quick and impactful learning. They have over 6,500 non-fiction books and podcasts across 27 different categories. Blinkist basically allows you to absorb the essence of each book, which is perfect for those who might have a busy lifestyle, but still want to stay ahead and educate themselves. Now I just listened to The Science of Storytelling, which I thought was a really thought-provoking book and a great resource for writers who want to craft more engaging stories. Uh, and it uses lessons from psychology and neuroscience. And the fact that you can either read or listen to each blink has been my favorite part. I love that I can just go for a run or exercise and be listening. Now Blinkist also has some incredible fiction titles like The Hobbit and Dune, and I love to see that they're adding more fiction. There's a new feature called Blinkist Spaces, which is where you can create a space for your team or book club or around a specific topic, and then you can share it with others so that you can learn and grow together. You can get 25% off Blinkist Annual Premium and start your 7-day free trial using the link below. Thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring the video and check the link below to subscribe. Okay, starting off with some of the big gateway drugs to fantasy. These are series that often turn beginners into hardcore fantasy fans, and if you still haven't read these, then you definitely need to. They're pretty much essential. Starting off with A Song of Ice and Fire. Now, I'm one to speak because I'm still not caught up with A Song of Ice and Fire. I do want to get caught up eventually, but I know Martin's taking his time, so I will too. I really don't think I need to explain myself with this one being essential, but it obviously has some really great world building with rich history, it has a ton of political intrigue and complex side plots. There's no doubt, A Song of Ice and Fire is one of the best unfinished fantasy series ever made. Now let's just hope that Georgie Boy gets around to finishing Ooh. it. Next up we have The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. Now I feel this series works better if you've already had some introduction into the genre, as Jordan was trying to create this incredible epic that pays tribute to many other fantasy works like The Lord of the Rings, but is also something of its own. Spanning 14 volumes and a prequel novel, The Wheel of Time has a huge cast of characters with tons of points of view. It can be a little bit daunting if you're new to fantasy, but it's also a series that many people people get hooked on. Uh, sometimes Robert Jordan has... he... He likes his detail, his descriptions can be long, and while I do feel like The Wheel of Time could have used a bit more editing, despite some of its flaws, it is still one of my favorite series ever. And then of course there is The Lord of the Rings by Tolkien. It's a classic, it's one of my favorites, I feel like everyone should try to read it at some point in their life, however I understand it's not going to click for everyone. Some people find it too slow compared to modern works, and that's fine. But I mean it's Tolkien, I think you have to at least have some respect. Anyways, I feel like The Hobbit is perfect for beginners, The Lord of the Rings is perfect for intermediate, and then advanced, I'm going to recommend The Silmarillion. 
This has excellent world building and history. It's almost written like a Bible or a history book of Middle Earth. And so at times it's very dense. It can be a bit of a chore to read. This isn't just a recommendation if you like the Lord of the Rings. No, you have to really like Middle Earth and want to know everything about it. Then you should read the Silmarillion. And then of course you can also read the Fall of Gondolin, the Children of Hurin, uh, Baron and Luthien, all the other works by Tolkien. Okay, that's some of the gateway fantasy out of the way. Moving on to more recommendations. Next up, we have one of the best grimdark fantasies out there, The Chronicles of the Black Company by Glenn Cook. This is a gritty, raw tale of a mercenary group known as the Black Company. They're not your typical heroes. You follow the Black Company through their trials and tribulations. You witness betrayal and alliances and a relentless struggle of survival. David Cook, man, he paints a vivid picture of war and just the psychological toll that it takes on all the mercenaries. You feel every ounce of their struggle, and it truly is one of the best depictions, I would say, of war. The Twelve Kings in Sharakai is the first book in the Shattered Sands series, and I really enjoyed this one. I feel like it was not really what I was expecting, but following Cheda and slowly unraveling her backstory in this really intricately built world was really compelling, and the audiobook narrator does a fantastic job, so I would recommend the audiobooks. It's action-packed, it has some elements of horror in it, uh, Sharakai, the city of Sharakai, and just the world building in general, I thought was so fascinating. There's so many Many small elements that just make this world feel really unique. For instance, there's a type of flower petal that people consume and it's basically this drug that opens up their senses and improves their natural durability and abilities. I really love that it isn't your traditional fantasy setting. I'm actually a pretty big fan of desert settings in fantasy and the city of Sharakai is just really fascinating. Now while I haven't yet finished The Shattered Sands, I am reading through them pretty fast. I own all the books, uh, so I do want to update with my thoughts in a future video, but but again, this is a series that I really don't see people talking about. Next up, I want to recommend the Gormenghast series by Mervyn Peake. This was written back in 1946, and this is the ultimate gothic fantasy. It's beautiful in this sort of weird Burton-esque type of way. It has some amazing prose, but it's also very slow and very dense. Gormenghast is the name given to a sprawling, gigantic castle that stretches for miles. It's an endless maze of galleries, a labyrinth of cryptic rooms, dark corridors, and endless stairs and secret passages. The castle is so large and ancient that it's gradually crumbling under the enormous weight of its own monstrous architecture. Really, Castle Gormenghast itself is the main character. Though that's not to discredit the incredibly odd and eccentric inhabitants of Gormenghast, which I find so fascinating. Now unfortunately, Mervyn Peake suffered from early onset dementia, and you can really feel that shift with book 3. Titus alone is kind of this weird, I would say optional extra. It came out when Peake was severely ill. And then there is a rare fourth book, which was written by his wife, and was based off of a single page. If you're gonna read Gormenghast, I would say the essentials are just books 1 and 2. Personally, I consider Gormenghast a flawed masterpiece. It's not going to be for everyone, and it's understandable why, but it's wonderfully strange and atmospheric, and it's unlike anything else I've ever read. Now, there was a decent miniseries adapted back in 2000, and apparently Neil Gaiman is actually adapting another version of Gormenghast, which I'm really excited about. The Regante series by David Gemmel. This is the first series that introduced me to Gemmel, and I know he is like a legend in the fantasy genre, so I do want to read more. I know a lot of people recommend starting with his Draenei saga, I believe, but I am here to recommend the Regante, or Regante, I don't know how it's pronounced. The epic scope of the story taking place over generations and generations, and the dozens of characters that are just so intricate and complex. The way that history warps the image of these characters that we fell in love with. The complexities of the geopolitics and the civil war in, in Stormrider. These books have a lot of heart. Now, is David Gemmel's writing a little bit simple? Sure, but he truly knows how to stir your emotions. He knows the root of people. Gemmel is also really great at action, and he uses a lot of common sense, like military strategy, that a lot of other fantasy series just kind of skip over. Again, I do want to read more Gemmel, so if you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments. Next up, we have The Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe. Now, this is technically science fiction, but I think it's completely fine to include it as fantasy as well. Now, this is a series where you pretty much have to have your brain on its A-game constantly. 
There is so much packed into these books, you can probably read it multiple times and still pick up on new stuff. It is packed with immense complexity and symbolism and literary value and yeah, I just think it's an amazing series that not many people really talk about anymore. So if you're into that type of thing, you need to read the Book of the New Sun and I should probably make more videos on it. And here I also want to recommend a true fantasy by Gene Wolfe called The Night. Now this one is much more accessible than the Book of the New Sun, uh, but that's by Gene Wolfe standards. It's still very complex. Now, while some people just read it as a standalone, I definitely think you should read the sequel as well. Now, yes, superficially, it might sound like a tropey story of dragons and knights and fairy queens, but it is so much more than that. It contains the wonder and power of Arthurian myth, but it also has the complexity of modern literature, and it's definitely well worth a read. Next up is Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. This is one of the best examples of what can be done with the genre and is epic in the true meaning of the word. This weaves a complex tapestry of magic, warfare, and political maneuvering. If you've heard of Malazan, you may know it's renowned for its intricate world building, multi-dimensional characters, and intricate plot twists, but most of all you probably know that it's a very complex series. And it absolutely lives up to the idea of high-level fantasy that people give it, and to read the whole 10 book series, you're going to need to invest in and keep track of a huge cast of characters, wandering storylines and multi-threaded plots, and hundreds and hundreds of pages worth of world building. If you give this book to a beginner who's just coming to the genre, I think they would be very overwhelmed. It does require that sort of experience of reading other fantasy works in order to not feel completely lost at the sheer scope. Now, I'm still new to these books, I'm currently making my way through them, and I am so surprised at how I don't exactly know what's going on, but I'm still loving it so much. The sheer imagination of the world building, the interaction with real world equivalents, and the rebuilding of stereotypes, not to mention this huge, diverse cast of characters, it's all really incredible. This is definitely a more advanced fantasy series, and I can't wait to read more. Kushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. This deserves a mention because it is definitely a very intricate series, and it's very different in the fantasy genre. Now, I haven't completed this series yet. Tor recently sent me the first three volumes uh, to review view, which is awesome because these have been on my radar for quite a while. The world of Kushiel's Dart is very immersive, especially the clashes of culture, the political intrigues and scheming, and one of the antagonists here is truly a villain. I would recommend this book to those who enjoy fantasy that's more grounded and has very little emphasis on the magic. Now keep in mind, it does have quite a bit of steamy, smutty scenes throughout, though the main focus is on the political intrigue. My next recommendation is only going to work for some people. This is The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, The Unbeliever by Stephen R. Donaldson. Book 1 being Lord Fowl's Bane. Now, this is a series with one of the most unlikable heroes. Thomas is afflicted with leprosy, a disfiguring and isolating disease. He's transported to a mysterious and magical realm called The Land, and he struggles to believe that this world is real and isn't just his mind looking for escapism. Now, you may see a lot of books claiming to have an anti-hero protagonist, while Thomas Covenant is truly an anti-hero. Now, as a leper, he's been ostracized by everyone he's ever known or loved, and he's become this very self-loathing person. He is admittedly a very difficult character to actually like. It's very much a hit or miss for a lot of people because of this, but the series is incredibly complex, and one of the standout features is this agonizing, self-loathing, and turmoil that Covenant feels as he struggles with his capacity for both great good and great evil. Now, the series sort of bridges the gap between Tolkien-esque fantasy and more modern-day fantasy. It might not be the best for beginners of the genre, it's a relentlessly bleak story, but it's also incredible. And next we have The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. This is a huge series that's made up of different series and trilogies. Uh, it starts off with the Farseer trilogy, which happens to be one of my favorites of all time. Uh, now the reason I wouldn't necessarily say it's for beginners is that it is a bit slower of a pace. It's also deeply traumatic. You go through a lot of trauma with poor fits the main character, uh, and that's something I actually love about Robin Hobb. She puts her characters through a lot of crap, but you end up feeling for them so, so much. 
she has some of the best and deepest characterization in fantasy. She also tackles a lot of mature issues and politics, and I understand why these books might not be for everyone, but for many, it's going to pack a powerful punch. And again, if you like character-driven stories, if you want to follow a character from childhood to adulthood, uh, then yeah, the Farseer trilogy is where you start. The Broken Empire by Mark Lawrence, starting off with Prince of Thorns. Now, I actually haven't read these books myself yet, uh, but I don't think they're exactly for beginners. It is very gritty and sometimes disturbing from what I've heard. It's an incredibly dark fantasy series, but it's also very compelling from what I hear, and it's got some strong prose to back it up. It's that sort of morally challenging story that's going to turn a lot of your expectations on its head. The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft, starting off with Senlin Ascends. This is one of my favorite series of all time, and I think it's incredibly underrated. Uh, it is beautifully written. It feels like a classic, and truly one day I think it will be a classic of fantasy. It falls into sort of steampunk or new weird. Basically, Thomas Senlin and his new bride on their honeymoon travel to the Tower of Babel. They end up getting lost in the tower, and the tower is hiding a lot of secrets. It's much more sinister than he had thought. I always recommend this series to people who can appreciate prose, and also to fans of Bioshock. It just feels kind of like Bioshock. It's also another great character-driven story. Now, I am fairly new to Guy Gavriel K, but I loved the book Tagana, and I definitely want to explore more of his books, and I feel like he's an author that really just deserves to be talked about way more because his books are incredible. I love the cultures that he creates and how he weaves the plots together. His characters are amazing. Um, all of his books are sort of based on different cultures in real life. He takes a lot of inspiration from the Byzantine Empire and Renaissance Italy. At times his books feel a bit more like historical fiction than they do fantasy because the fantasy aspect isn't it's not as magical as other fantasy series out there, but that does not mean it's not compelling and it's not creative. He's one of the best authors I've read, if that's saying anything, so yeah, you should definitely try reading Guy Gavriel K. Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn by Tad Williams. All the authors you like have probably read this series. Uh, I, I'm surprised how many of my favorite authors have been inspired by Tad Williams and his lush world of Austin Ard. This is truly a classic that stands tall above the giants of the genre. Tad Williams takes us on this epic journey across the land of Austin Ard, where Simon is tangled up in a battle against evil that's threatening the land. There's compelling characters, sprawling landscapes, uh, and a deep sense of history to this world. Really, it's a fantasy fan's dream come true. I would even say it's one of the greatest fantasy series ever written. But it does start off extremely slow. It is very cozy at the beginning, which I enjoyed, but then it just kept going on. Make sure you push through because it is worth it. Now to all those fantasy fans that are open to reading manga, even to the ones that aren't, I think you need to give Berserk a chance. Berserk is an incredible fantasy. Honestly, one of the best dark fantasy series ever written. And I'm still making my way through it. it I want to make more videos on Berserk soon. If you love fantasy and especially dark fantasy or or grim dark fantasy, Berserk is absolutely incredible. What I'm holding here is the deluxe edition, and I think this is the best way to read Berserk. Now, keep in mind that this first volume here, it starts off very dark. You don't really like the main character Guts at all at first, uh, but then later on, especially when you start on the second volume, the Golden Age arc, it just gets so much better, and yeah, I would highly recommend giving Berserk a try. Kentaro Mira truly has one of the most brilliant minds in manga, and some of the best artwork work I've ever seen. Well, when it comes to manga and graphic novels. The Wandering Inn is a web novel that I recently started. I have heard so many great things about this web novel, uh, and I'm excited to continue reading on because it is very long. Now this falls in the lit RPG genre, a genre of fiction that combines elements of role-playing games with traditional literature. And the great thing is that since it's a web novel, you can read it online for free. It was calculated The Wandering Inn would be a 30 plus book series if the books were split into a thousand page volumes. And the story is only like one third or one half of the way done. So yeah, it's, it's a massive epic story. And yes, I will be making some reviews of the different arcs of The Wandering 
filtering in as I continue to read. The Second Apocalypse by R. Scott Baker. Now this is a series that contains three sub-series within it, uh, starting off with the Prince of Nothing trilogy. This is another series I haven't read yet. I recently picked it up after watching uh, a video by Philip Chase that convinced me that I need to read this series. It sounds like a very complex and dark fantasy series that has a lot of philosophical elements to it. I have even heard some reviewers say that it's so richly detailed that it rivals Tolkien. So it's definitely something I want to get to. The Dark Tower by Stephen King. I wanted to include this one because it is very different. This is a blend of Western and fantasy, and I haven't gotten to it yet. I hear that it is much better if you read some other books by Stephen King first. So I want to do that before diving into the Dark Tower. But I have heard many people praise this series and say that Stephen King has succeeded in writing a truly American epic fantasy. The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanders. Anderson. Again, I do think beginners can easily get into this one, but they might be turned off by the huge massive page count of these books. And yes, this is a planned 10 book series, so you're gonna need a strong bookshelf to hold up these books. While these are showstoppers, I do feel like Brandon Sanderson is one of the most accessible authors. It's very easy to get into his books, his prose isn't too flowery or anything like that, uh, but this series has some of the best world building I've seen in fantasy. The world just feels so alien and different. So much so that Roshar almost feels like a character in itself. The political intrigue and the magic systems at play are incredible. This truly is epic fantasy. Now I am always recommending the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. I might have even mentioned it in my beginner fantasy series as well. I'm not too sure. These are not difficult to read by any means, but they are basically a masterclass in characterization. He writes some incredibly complex characters that are very morally ambiguous and you kind of hate them and love them at the same time. Joe Abercrombie has created some of the best characters that I've ever read. He's also really great at writing battle scenes uh, and dialogue. Abercrombie hasn't let me down. I've come to trust his writing and he is now an auto buy author for me. And that is my advanced guide to fantasy. Let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations for books that should be on this list. And of course, these videos are made possible by all of you over on Patreon. I appreciate the support so much, guys. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed.